Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. It's Friday, July 24th. I blinked again, and it's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. I know, right? It's the day after my daughter's birthday. Woohoo! So, we're making it a birthday weekend. My daughter has turned 31. I don't know if she wants me telling her age. I won't know if she's that old yet, if she cares about people telling her age. But I'm telling you. I, when the heck did I get old enough to have a 31-year-old daughter? I have no idea. I had a 30-year-old son. Well, almost. Almost 30. Almost. But uh, anyway, we're going to be drawing today, and uh, we're going to make it request day. Request so, day? Yep, it's a request day, because up until five minutes ago, I was drawing Birds of Prey, and we were recording that, and then we went, oh, shoot, we got to do live stream. And so I don't have anything prepared other than uh, I'm here. Yep. Yep. So, and we on to announce... Last week's, or this week's winner for the Wacom One is Emma from Worcester, UK. Emma from Worcester, Worcester? W-O-R-C-E-S-T-E-R, -E -E UK. So you have won a brand new Wacom One. <laughs> Dustin's been using it the uh, last couple days, haven't you? Yeah, uh, it's actually really... It's a really uh, nice uh, Wacom for, for its price range. Yeah, it's, well, very, I think it's very, a nice Wacom anyway. Oh, yeah. Very lightweight, nice uh, sensitivity. Uh, do you have it here? And I do. I want to show it. Let's just show, do you have it in the box? No, I have it in my bag. Do you have the box? I do not. I have that at my place. Oh, that's at home? Yeah. But here it is. This is it. This is one. This is a, this is a Wacom one. Right here. And... Uh, this is with we've given away our third one um next week we will announce the details we're taking a little break uh, but next week we'll announce the details for the next one um but this is a uh, welcome one very very sleek very very cool um i dig it man yeah its actual size is more of a 15 inch but the screen size itself is 13 13 yeah it's about yeah. the size of a it's a little bit, a tiny, tiny bit smaller, square wet inch wise than a. Uh, yeah, look at than a. a, a, a it's a, just about than an the iPad. Same size as my razor blade, as far as width goes. Yeah. So. That's great. So it's, but it's surprisingly super light. That's that's the thing I like about it the most is how light yeah. it is because I've I've used a. Uh, uh, past Wacom's of the same size, and they're like twice as heavy as my laptop. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. know, but they're good. They're good. Oh, they're good. Yeah, just but um, heavy boys. <laughs> and uh, also, we got a couple things going on over at the website, over at creatureartteacher.com. First of all, Tim Hodges' new course is cranking right along. Uh, he's just come out with how to draw fantasy creatures, and uh, it's doing really well. We're really happy with it. Go on over to creatureartteacher.com and you can grab that. Do we have a slide for that? No, we only had the pre-order, so, oh, so right. I took that down and replaced it with the... Okay, uh, and the also, uh, we've got another brand new course. Well, not brand new course. We've got another course that is at a brand new price. So, my watercolor course. Uh, if you've ever been itching to learn watercolor, now's the time because we've just reduced my watercolor down to my course, the entire course, and it's big too. How long is that? It's like Ooh. 16 hours or something, four, 14 least. hours or 12 hours, something like that. It's, it's five it's bucks, five dollars. Five dollars. Yeah, it's just five bucks. Yeah, slide for that. There, there, there it is. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, watercolor course now on sale for five bucks. Go on over and check it out. Creatureartteacher.com. Or um, or on Instagram it looks like a other other course. No, <laughs> other course. Other course. It's my other course. Oh war. <laughs> my version of a griffin with a different cat and a different bird done I like it I like that Who's idea it's my version of a griffin because I've been drawing oh, your version of a griffin yeah I've been drawing uh, um, birds of prey you want to go to the desktop let's go to the desktop so these are. This is what I've been. This has been the last couple of days. Um, I'm on Falcons right now on the Birds of Prey course. 
This is one that I'm actually currently working on. Uh, I had to stop in the middle of the lecture because uh, because of you guys because <laughs> we're doing a live stream. Hey, you sound like you're blaming blaming it on this because of you guys. I had to stop. <laughs> but uh, this is the one I did yesterday. This is um, this is a Jer Falcon, and uh, I really wanted to focus on environment and that sort of thing as well. Uh, it's important. I, I'm talking about anatomy and all those and, and, and markings and uh, uh, feather groupings and all of that, but I also want to talk about when you place the animal in an environment. And so we kind of hit on that kind of hard yesterday and composition when we created this image, uh, the falcon. And uh, so that, that was a lot of fun. Whoops, let me do this. There we go. And then the one that we're doing today, I wanted a little bit, little bit more action. Peregrine Falcon, here we go. Peregrine Falcon, it's the uh, fastest animal on the planet. Did you know that? Yeah. They dive over 250 miles an hour, uh, or 240 miles an hour when they go into a stoop. And I just thought it would be fun to try to get some speed and, uh, and action into the image. So I made a, did a, a much more simple approach. And... Yeah, and this is one we're working on right now. And it was kind of fun. Right in at you. Flying in at you. So, there's a, there's a peregrine falcon going into a stoop. Not quite there yet. When they go into a stoop, they, they tuck their wings almost all the way in and just fall um, after they do a few flaps and then go come down like a bullet. And uh, and they, yeah, break 200 miles an hour. They go, woohoo! Yeah. Then they hit their prey. They actually punch their prey. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. I've, I've heard. Yeah, they punch the prey right out of the sky. And then they go down and dispatch it. They just go, yeet. Yeah. Right in the so head. this one's been fun. So anyway, so let's do that. Uh, we're going to do a griffin with my own cat and my own bird. Your own bird. Cat and bird. What if we do a griffin, a leopard, or a tiger as a griffin? What do you think, a tiger or a leopard? Uh, how about like a house cat? <laughs> just go with hummingbird silly. wings? Just just go silly with it. Like <laughs> a griffin has a tail, right? And they have bird feet. Do they have bird feet? Uh, Let me look it up. I gotta look it up. They have bird feet. They yeah, it's bird feet. Uh, wings, griffin. The head and tail of a cat, I think. Griffin. Alternative form of a griffin, legendary creature, a breed of dog. Oh, usually called what? No, griffin. Mythological creature with the body of a lion, and head and wings of an eagle. Uh, oh, I had it reversed. Okay. Uh, oh well, let's just do that. Let's do the body. Yeah, let's do the body of a lion. I, I mean, I could do the body of a of a leopard or a tiger. Of a tiger, or how about um, a griffin with a male lion's body, with that with the head and wings of of a falcon, but has the mane of the lion. Oh, right? that's interesting. Or maybe he has, or maybe it, there it's still like the bird uh, falcon feathers, but oversized like a lion's mane. You know. What I'm, you know I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. See what I'm saying? See what I'm saying, partner? I hear you. Move all this stuff over. Got all this stuff. All this and shit. And hi, by the way, I'm here too. <laughs> I haven't started yet. Hold on. I haven't gotten to you. You, it, you. you act like this is your show or something. No, I don't. There we go. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> So, oh, there, there it is. There's our griffin. <laughs> Cartoon mythological creatures, right here. Boop. Oh, it just popped Boop. up. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I put it right there. It's so tiny. Yeah. There it is. Cartoon mythological creatures. There's our griffin right on the cover. Cover of the Rolling Stone. So there it is. There's uh, Tim Hodge's Cartoon Mythical Creatures, How to Draw. He's got some really cool PDFs with that, too. Oh, yeah. 
And uh, so let's do our own Griffin. And I'm just going to dive in with it. Gosh, it's hot. <laughs> so it says, make it a PETA Griffin. PETA. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, right. Bader. Yeah. You gotta make a Griffin, Bader. Uh, let's go 18 by 24 vertical. Just for you folks watching on the Instagram. Dustin, how can I deactivate the subtitles on the live stream? Um, if you highlight your mouse over the live stream, you should see uh, what looks like a gear. Image the, the 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 setting icon. Click on that, and you'll see auto generated captions, and uh, just have that turned off, and uh, that should fix that. I do something designy. Something designy. You could do tiny griffin, half house cat, half parrot. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the body of a cat, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. And body of a cat, a bit of uh, a head and wings of a of a bird, like a falcon or an eagle. Here we go. <laughs> Let's see. Pegasus. A baby Pegasus. <laughs> I want something really kind of graphic. Can any of you guys do Gronk's voice? I'm trying my best here, kiddo. Oh, let's do uh, 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 its size 300. Body of a tiger, but the head of a vulture. Interesting idea. I want this kind of. Ooh, this is a good, good Griffin idea. Peregrine, uh, uh, the wings and head of a peregrine falcon, but with a with a body of a cheetah. That's interesting. These are both the fastest the, animals. Yeah. The cheetah is the fastest mammal, isn't it? Yep. And the peregrine is the fastest animal. Or is the fast, fastest bird. Fastest animal. Yeah. So here, I'm just trying to find some fluidity here. I think we're all done with the uh, with the suggestions. With the suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know when to stop. It's question time. I think we're done with the recommendations. Now it's time for questions. See, when I when I start sketching, I like to go really loose and just try to find that move. Try to find that fluid design. Has Aaron ever done a falconry art piece? I hope so. If he hasn't, uh, would he consider doing one? What do you mean a falconry art piece? Um, you mean painting a falcon? Either one well, falcon or maybe... But that's what I just showed. I should just what? showed a falcon. Yeah, but I'm, I'm thinking... Uh, Maybe like an art book that's based off of a specific falconry. Oh, George from WhatsApp. Hey, what's going on? George, George. Hey, George. oh, look at all. We've got some zebras coming in there. Huh? I just got a, uh, one of our associates in Africa just sent me some photos. Oh, awesome. Man, I wish I was there right now. Will someone be riding the griffin? No. Uh, what paper are you using? 
Vir virtual paper. <laughs> oh, what what's the what's the type of paper that you always use for your sketching? The the Strathmore. Strathmore. Yeah, it's a virtual Strathmore. <laughs> So can, do you want them looking straight at us? Do you want it at an angle? What do you think? I'm thinking angle. Like I'm thinking angle, looking up, and making it look like that he's screeching or roaring or whatever, like speaking. Oh, I know what I can do. Okay, there's that. Let's just keep that for now. For now. YouTube question. Hi, Aaron. Do you ever deal with not being able to finish your drawings? I've been struggling with finishing my paintings lately. I get tired of looking at them after spending too much time on the details. Then you know what you do? Stop spending so much time on the details. No, I don't. Because I don't spend too much time on the details. Will you ever offer uh, print books that display your work? Eventually. Maybe. start drawing. How long have you been drawing? Yesterday. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I started drawing a long, long time ago. I can still remember the way that drawing made me feel. I started drawing uh, it was the summer of 69. See, I can, I can get a song out of any of them. <laughs> you doing, Peter? <laughs> you trying to do it to yourself to see if you can... Uh, I started drawing uh, when I was probably around... Two-ish? That would be 1970 to you and me. I'm going to shrink that down just a little bit and make it longer. Give him a longer neck. How's that feel? I don't know. I don't know. What do you think, Dustin? What do I think? What, what do I think whoops. about what? Z select, deselect. Yeah, that shine look, looks a bit better. Is that head too? I don't know. I think if you just fill fill in the 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 feathery mane. I got it. You know, the head's too uh, too long. Yeah, the neck is too long. Then shrink it. Just shrink it. Just shrink it. YouTube question. Is there an art medium you have tried and decided it wasn't for you? Um, no, I th no, I can't think of one that, like that. Actually, that's a good question. <clears throat> what is the next step you would uh, you would take to enhance your workspace <laughs> to make it more comfortable or efficient or Cool. Uh, I make it. I make it I make it bigger. Yeah. <laughs> bigger. We need more space in here. Good thing I've been working on all these birds of prey, huh? Mm. 
indeed. Hey, Aaron. Hey, what's going on, eh? Uh, which one is your favorite book on animal drawing? I don't have a favorite book on animal drawing, I don't think. I mean, I, I have some... <laughs> I have uh, some favorite artists that have done books with animal paintings. Do you prefer digital or traditional? Artwork? I prefer... Uh, Whatever I have my hands on at the time. I really, I love, I love them both. So I'm still keeping it really loose. Let's see here, edit, retransform. Make him a hummingbird. Give him little, hum little blurry hummingbird wings. Nice. <laughs> Do you listen up more if you're drunk? Uh, I don't drunk drink. I don't draw Dr if I'm drunk. <laughs> I don't drunk drink. <laughs> I swear to drunk I'm not God. Do it this way, like sweep them way back. I don't know. I don't know if I want to do that. What would it grip you? Sweep it way back. Or, see this is where I you can have some fun with the wings here. Don't griffins have eagle claws at the front? Maybe they do. I think, cer yeah, I think certain designs do. But, I like it like this. After all, it is your version. Am I drawing on the wrong layer? Yep. Idiot! God! How much time does it usually take you to become comfortable drawing an animal you've never drawn before? I don't know. Um, I can figure out the anatomy fairly quickly, usually, because I understand comparative anatomy. That's the thing. If you can understand comparative anatomy, it really helps. Kind of uh, not liking it. <laughs> kind of not liking it. <laughs> try something else here. We've always got that one in our back pocket. Some recommends uh, may, uh, maybe flip the head in the other way, the other direction. Are you trying a new one? Yep. Almost like I, what I was drawing earlier today. <laughs> what would you recommend for the person who wants to pursue anima uh, an animation career? Go for it. <laughs> what would I say? Do it. Do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Create a griffin using Florida native animals. <laughs> Armadillos. 
bald eagle, osprey. What kind of tail do they have? This would be the cat, right? Swamp rabbit. Oh, an alligator griffin. There you go. <laughs> what do you think that would be like? Like a... Like a... An alligator body. There we go. Like but this. with like the head and wings of a bat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> At that point, it's just a dragon. <laughs> Hello, Aaron and Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> I freaking love Duncan. <laughs> Hello, Aaron and Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you mean Dustin? Aaron, any advice on what companies look for in a portfolio when hiring a new concept artist? Well, good concepts, first of all. So, you know, it's just general, can you draw? Um, what's the, the originality of your work? Um, there we go. Um, it, it's general draftsmanship, really. I mean, that's what they look for. And originality. What's your favorite mythical creature? The Minotaur. Mm. Good choice. Right, what do you think of that? That pose. I think that's cooler. You guys cooler? Yeah, I do. There, see, when you get really scribbly, you can come up with stuff more now quickly. More quicker, like. What big feet? The more you go scribbly the more you can get things done quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Aaron, do you have some thoughts on, of drawing Triceratops? No. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Griffin's name is Duncan. Hey, Duncan. Do, is it Dun Duncan or Duncan. Duncan. Because it's spelled D-U-N-C-A-N. Yeah, it's Duncan. Duncan? That's Duncan. Yeah, that's Duncan. I freaking love Duncan. can't get models for live drawing at all, can you still learn anatomy through practicing looking at photographs? First of all, you can get live models. I don't care who you are. Look at people outside. Go to the mall. Go to the beach. Go to a park. You can get models. People just sitting there. Draw people just sitting there. And yes, you probably could, but it learned from from the internet. But I don't think it'll be as strong. Do you think drawing is a born talent that is perfected over the years, or is it an activity that, with constant practice, becomes a talent? Yes, the second one. <laughs> So, look how fast we're going here. 
Faster than the speed of light? Faster than the speed of light. Faster than a speeding bullet. There we go. So, you get in there, you scribble it out, you find your poses. Don't take too long. So what do we have here? Well, we've got an elbow. There's a there's an elbow right there. There's a wrist. That's the other thing. Know your anatomy. The birds. I'll be teaching all of that in my Birds of Prey course. And speaking of anatomy, can you share some anatomy tips with us? Uh, sure. So let's talk about anatomy. Let's mix this bird, bird. with this cat. First thing we're going to do, we're going to start with our bird anatomy. Whoops, need a new layer. So what am I drawing here? Well, this is called that yellow part that goes over the beak. It's called the sear, C-E-R-E. -E. The upper part of the bill is the maxilla. This nostril right here, it's called the nair. Nair. Yes, the nair. And if if we we're drawing a falcon, which we still could draw a falcon, I guess. We had a falcon, and I think drawing a falcon beak would be cool. They have an extra little bit right here on their beak. See? See what I'm drawing? This extra little tooth? That's called a tomial tooth. And falcons use that to break the neck of their prey. The, the part of the eye that always makes a bird of prey look mean, that's the orbital ridge. If you could draw some ears. Ears? Ears for the griffin. No. <laughs> How's that? How about an air? Do you have a least favorite animal? Fire ants. <laughs> That's a given. Actually, no. For me, mosquitoes. You know, mosquitoes don't bite me. And you oh, know I'm, that firsthand. You've seen that. Oh, I've seen it because they go for me instead. <laughs> I'm practically an all-you-can-eat buffet for mosquitoes, and I hate it. You and Vedanta. I was lost in the Gulf. I was lost in the ocean, Gulf of Mexico specifically, um, when I was 14. We were lost. My brother and I, and my stepfather, we were lost for three days in the ocean. We finally made it to shore on the second day, but we were in the middle of nowhere and we were having to get by for the ne next couple of days on, on shore, but we were attacked and eaten alive by mosquitoes. 1982, this is when it was, 1982, and, ever, and I was, there wasn't a square millimeter on my body after we got rescued that was not bitten. I was bitten everywhere. My fingers, I couldn't close my hands. Um, my fingers were uh, like sausages. Uh, my eyes, my face was swollen. Everything was bitten. And ever since then, mos mosquitoes don't really bug me. You can, you'll see when like when we have people over everyone else gets bitten and I don't I always say I taste like egg yolk and disappointment <laughs> <laughs> well either you do get bitten and you just don't feel it I think I get bitten and I don't feel it or the or I taste like egg yolk and disappointment no or they they've been you enough times to where you've grown an immunity to where they're like, 
Oh, he's been messed around a little too much. We should just let him be. <laughs> okay, so there's our there's our eagle face or falcon slash eagle head. Here's our the ear the feathers that come off and come out of here and create like the cheek. Those are called the ear coverts. Coverts, coverts. And they cover the ear. There's actually a little ear back there. A little hole in the head. I'm turning 30 this year. Started painting a few years uh, a few years ago. So is Dustin turning 30 this year. A few years ago. I feel like I'm late with the art career. Wish I had a... Wish, wish I had done uh, art years ago. I hope it's not too late. It's not too late. You're only 30. I'm, I'm turning 30 in September, and I just started my photography last last year. Yeah. So it's all it's all about the determination. It's all about that now. base. About that base. base. No trouble. I'm not a bad Abby. Bad Abby. Okay, so now we're switching into the forearms. Here's the shoulder, and it's really kind of uh, it's an odd design because normally the front legs are the wings that's that would be the wing on a, on a bird Dustin have you ever done Kermit the Frog <laughs> do it yeah I just did there you go What brush do you use? This is my custom brush that I made a couple years ago. My Pastel C brush. And on the hands, as far as the anatomy goes, on when you're drawing cat or dog or animals like this, think of think of the paw as this. Pull your fingers under and do that, and then you got your thumb up here. That's basically the paw. Hey, Gabby's here. Gabby! Wait, are you drawing a griffin? I'm drawing a griffin. He's drawing a griffin. Gabby! 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 <laughs> so just like that see the meat right here that you get on your arms that meat right there that's what that is and then the, your your arm twists it comes around no one more time for the uh, for Instagram the here. meat right here right here that's what I'm drawing down in here the meat here and then if you see your arm kind of you get this twisting kind of rhythm to the arm that's what we're drawing here there's the equivalent of the thumb right there and here is little his wrist is are you using any uh, references right now no making this stuff up baby making it up as we go Yay! Are you a Duncan or Duncan? <laughs> I think Nick put that up there a while ago. I just got to it. Sorry, Nick. I freaking love Duncan. Are you Duncan or Duncan? So there's the hand. And then we're going to go right into the latissimus muscle going back. Our ribs. Tricep muscles. Up there. I tried three D modeling a wing, winged uh, quadruped in the past, a dragon. Uh, had a problem of not being able to get the shoulders and wing muscles right uh, to look right, either too tense or flimsy. They either end up becoming too tense or too flimsy. Well. It's hard because if you have a four-legged animal that also has wings, 
there's nothing in the in the universe or well, nothing in the on the earth that has that anatomy so you got to make it up into believable anatomy because birds with wings well birds that's their front arms so you got to make that you got to make that work you've got to work you got you better work what about 40 year old is it is that too late no that's 12 years ago for me. I start I didn't start I didn't start creature art teacher till I was 45. The only time it's ever too late is when you're dead. Yep. <laughs> Any other time Truth. there's 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 no late late time. So there I like the man, I like this one a lot better, don't you? Oh yeah. Are you dynamic? Are you going to add uh, the the main idea, or are you just going to keep it? I think I'm going to keep it like this because I want to I want to be able to see the wings. Twill. We'll let that come right into here. Now these feathers that come here. See, here's the the scapula is right. Well, it's kind of hidden behind back here. Scapula is there. The birds have feathers that kind of sit on their back right here, right over their scapula. You know what those feathers are called? Are you asking me? Yeah. What, what's the question again? I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. I'm reading the questions! I said birds have feathers that sit on their back like this, right at the base of their wings, right over their scapula. Oh, I don't know that. It's right over their scapula. What do you think those feathers are called? Um, scapula feathers? Yes. <laughs> really? They're called scapulars. <laughs> <laughs> I was giving you a hint. <laughs> it's like, that's the scapula, so scap the scapula feathers. <laughs> now, the feathers that cover the wings up here in this part, do you know what those are called? No, you're not going to know. These are called the marginals, the upper marginal coverts. All these little feathers up here. There's our wrist. There's our wrist right there. The elbow is actually hidden in here. This is a tendon that goes from the wrist to the shoulder. The elbow is in here. There we go. Question. Yes. How Shoot. does Disney get their reference photos from when when it comes to their expression sheets? Their reference photos. When it, we just we just draw them. We draw them. It's called experience. Experience. And when it comes to like if you're trying to get like a certain environment down, then you just travel to wherever is the most yeah, but Most this person was asking about expressions. Yeah. We just draw them. Just draw them, boo. <laughs> just draw them, boo. That's indeed imagine Emperor Palpatine doing Shia LaBeouf's do it of just motiv do motivational it. speech. <laughs> do it. <laughs> just do it. Make your dreams come true. <laughs> what did what what did you just do a little while ago? What was the in person? Kermit? No, you did one before, before we started. It was really funny. Oh, you, you did uh, uh uh Attenborough. David Attenborough. You did a really oh. good you did a good David Attenborough. <laughs> this is the Griffin. <laughs> A mythical creature like no other on planet Earth. That? Yeah, that was you did a that was pretty good, but you did a better one. You, you actually got this inflection, perfect. Because yeah, because uh, I said like immediately after I heard it, like I, yeah. If I if I do the impersonation like immediately after I hear it, that's like the closest I get to it. Yeah. <laughs> then after that, it just. It fades. It, it fades. It fades. <laughs> it fades away. 
like my life. If only I had one. See these feathers that I'm drawing right here? See these feathers mm -hmm. right here? Uh, Can you yeah. see them? I believe uh, so. Over here? I, these feathers? These. All I'm seeing is a mouse that is like this small. <laughs> Well, the the right yeah, here. The we blow them up. These feathers, right there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. These actually have a name, and they they have a function. They they can move them. They're very stiff feathers. They're, Is called, that what they're called stiff feathers. They're called alula feathers. Alula. Yes, those are the alula feathers. It's basically, it's like the thumb. It's the feather. It's the thumb. Uh -huh. And they can help control airflow over the wing. Have you ever seen the mythical creature art artwork to Spiderwick Chronicles? It's gorgeous. No. You know, we were making King of the Elves at the time. And, um, yeah, at the time I was like, man. <laughs> man. <laughs> man. Dang it. And Spiderwick Chronicles came out. Why does that sound familiar, Spiderwick Chronicles? It's where they had to look through the glass thing to see the creatures. Is not that the one? Maybe it's not. I don't remember. Uh, you looking it up? Yeah. Yeah, it's a look that got turned to a live action movie, but it's a live action movie I've never seen, unfortunately. Oh, you never seen it? No. It's all right. If you just one fantasy movie I actually rather enjoy is um, Strange Magic. Strange Magic. That's the oh, one. Oh, what a love. Strange Did you ever watch magic. it? No, I, but I like the song by ELO. Yeah. That da song's in there. Strange Magic. No, I got yeah, it. Was, uh, it's that one animated feature that George Lucas directed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it that he directed it, or was he produced it? I know he had something to do with it. But Lucasfilm did it. Lucasfilm, yeah. Yeah, because I know some people. I think, uh, I think Woody worked on it. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a fun movie. I mean, it's not going to win any any awards, but. <laughs> do Aaron, do you happen to have any advice for drawing ter terrains? Oh, like mountains and fields? It was terrains. Um, you know, you, you approach it the same way you approach any kind of composition that you might create. Meaning... Look for the abstract shapes. Look for the, the abstract design. That's that's the key. You want to make sure and it's all the same rules, you know, you don't you don't want everything to feel even. You know, you never want to have that, that horizon line cutting through the middle of your composition. Man, I can't believe it's Friday. Right? Oh, Gabby. What? Gabby says, uh, today I plan on practicing with gouache today. I want to paint uh, some of the ocean pics I took yesterday. Watching these live streams in the morning inspires me to do art for the rest of the day. Oh, good. Aww. Then do it. Do it. Oh, I got an ant right here. I got an ant crawling down my screen. I won't hurt you, ant, but you can't be there. So I shoot him. Be gone. He's just a he's just a squirrel trying to get a nut in this world. I'm not gonna hurt him.
There's our wings. Our you ever Griff. Find Griffin. it hard keeping volume while while animating. Um. No, not anymore. I did at one time, but I um, I'm very careful to compare throughout the process. I'm always comparing my early drawings to the current ones I'm working on to make sure that the volumes stay consistent. Yeah, I think I like it better with, with cat claws. I mean cat feet. Don't you? Yeah. With the with the lion paws? Yeah. Yeah. There, I got the drawing done. Don't you think that's better than this one? Whoops, not that one. That one? That's way better. Oh my gosh, look how horrible that was. <laughs> and now, now we get there. See, that's the thing. You always think that you might have a really good drawing, and you stick with it, but you got to force yourself to be better. Force yourself to look beyond. Justin, <laughs> your, your Anne Burrow sounds like dump, Dumbledore from the first Harry Potter film. <laughs> oh, there is a little bit of that. Actually. Hmm. Actually. Actually. <laughs> All right. Color. C -c 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 Color. Let's, uh, let's do this, shall we? How do you draw animals with their mouths open? Is there a specific way? Yeah, well, you got to think about anatomy, right? You think about that anatomy, and you draw accordingly. So I know that a, how a bird's anatomy works. And so I draw... Let me, let me give you a little anatomy lesson, shall we? Let me tell you something. Let me show you something. All right, so let's say we have a blade. We got a boy. Let's say he's an eagle. Matter of fact, I've got an eagle skull right here. Here's my eagle skull. Uh, right so, here. can you see that? Oh, sorry. Me, Hello. Uh, Pay attention. Sorry. So here's my eagle skull, right here. There you go. Turn it around that way. Okay. So what I want to draw, I'm going to draw for you very quickly. What do we have here? Well, we have a, a scleral bone which holds the eye. Here's our orbital ridge right here. Okay. Now the skull comes down like this. Now I know this is a question about drawing an animal's mouth open, so I'm going to cut to the chase. We're going to get in here. There's nasal openings and stuff like that, but. The biggest thing I want you to see is that the mouth comes out back to about here. Okay? There's the beak. And here, we'll draw this piece here. The bottom jaw comes back and connects to about here. So there's where it, it connects, back there. There's the back of the skull. And we got the, the uh, spine and everything connects here. Okay, so there's that. Now, how, well, what happens when that mouth opens? Well, when you see the actual mouth, if I knock this back, if we were to draw the bird with skin, the mouth actually stops right about here. The corner of the mouth is there, right there. Not back here, but there. It's sort of like us. Our jaw goes way back here, but the corner of our mouth is here, right? So, when this bird opens its mouth, let's knock this back a little bit. So when this bird opens its mouth, Knock that back a little more. Knock this back a little more. There. Now we can see a little better. So when he opens his mouth, what am I thinking about? Well, I'm thinking, well, the pivot point is going to be back here. That's where the jaw opens. 
So that jaw can come way down like that. But the corner of the mouth is here. So what happens? Well, there's skin here. So that skin right here is going to stretch. And you get that. And this is all skin right here. Just like on a person. Ah, when I open my mouth, ah, I got skin that stretches. I'll just draw a little bit of like we're looking inside, just slightly. But that's what you're going to see. But I know that it pivots from here. And there's the feathers on top. And if I were to, <coughs> wow. Whew. If I were to draw the, the eye in here, you'd have something like this. There's the shadow of the orbital ridge. Like that. Okay? So it's the same thing with a human, same thing with a cat. You know, a cat, if they open their mouth, there's a cat, meow. Alright, so there's a cat, there's a cheeks. Now if a cat opens its mouth, it's the same thing. It's going to have a big stretch in the cheeks, right here. Big stretch because it actually hinges back there. So here's that hinge, like that, there's the tooths, like that, you get a big stretch. Okay, so that's how you draw an animal with her mouth open. Think about the anatomy of where that jaw connects. Twitch question, what is the best method of painting as a beginner? Getting your brush wet and putting it on the canvas or on the paper. That's the best method. Just get in there and start doing it. Once you start doing it, you'll start learning. If you're not making mistakes, then you're not doing it hard enough. Get in there and just do it. Good guy. Facebook question. Are there any birds who have teeth? Well, not necessarily, not in the way that dinosaurs did. There are birds that have, there's some primitive birds that have tooth-like structures, like little ridges on their beaks. Mergansers are birds like that. They have like little little ridges. Let me see if I can pull one up. Mergansers are diving ducks. Whoops. I don't know why that said that. Uh, Mergansers are diving ducks. There we go. Facebook course, there's, there's Nick and his deep thoughts. But I want you to see mergansers. Mergansers. So, uh, merganser beak. Beak. There we go. Merganser beak. Images. So if, I, if we look at, let's blow this up a little bit. Mergansers are primitive ducks, diving ducks. And let's see if we can see a close-up. You can see here, actually I'm gonna I'm gonna just do a screen grab. Okay, so now let's open this up. File, open. Swans have uh, serrated beaks. You discover this when you, when one bites you. <laughs> Not quite like this. They do have like little ridges in there. But if you look at this, this is really ridged. 
Meganger's, they almost, it's, it, it almost is teeth. They probably have the most ridged beak I can think of. And once again, there's that stretchy skin, remember? That, that, that bottom jaw, if you run, you know, connects way back behind the eye. But look at those teeth. You see the teeth there on the upper jaw? Oh, yeah. See that? Pretty cool. Very dinosaur-like. So there's your bird teeth. Back to it. Back to life. Back to reality. All right, here we go. So I've got the... Do we want to make this... This more feels more like an eagle. But we can make it... We can color it um, somewhat peregrine falcony. Have you ever painted a macaw? Macaw! Macaw! Yes. Yes, I have. Caw, 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 caw. That took you, took you. I don't think a caw, caw or a took you, took you. I thought we already established that the caw, caw and the took you, took you don't work. <laughs> oh shoot! Hold on. I got to put that back and get back to. Deep Thoughts by Jack Handy. There we go. You're back, Nick. Nick, 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 Nick. Did you have someone build the the website for you, or did you, or do you manage it yourself? That would be Nick Birch. And Steven. And, well, Nick originally built it, though. He built it, but Steven helps maintain it. Yes, he does. That's how Nick and I got involved. Oh my. All right, let's do uh, The real question is, how involved? <laughs> <laughs> is there anything you haven't painted? I've never painted a man eating his own head. I guess you haven't painted everything. You haven't painted the ceiling of a chapel. No. I want to remind you folks that my... There we go. I want to remind you folks that my... Watercolor course... Thank you, I couldn't get that out. My watercolor course is... Five dollars. It's only five bucks right now. So go on over to Creature Art Teacher Dot Com. Teacher And you will find my watercolor course for only five bucks. Yeah, yeah, Actually, I'm you know what I should have done today? Some watercolor. Should have done some watercolor. That would have been fun. Didn't even think of it. Idiot. Idiot. <laughs> Gabby's asking, how's my dude Steve, by the way? Still putting pizza on, on a grill? Oh, yeah. Steve's good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Stevie Weavy. Oh, yeah. So we're going to, we're going to color this. Our own way. Okay, we're going to give him a little falcon hood, beard. But, in this case, 
we are going to have it fade off into spots. They're going to say into space. 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 No. Now what we need is cowbell. Does the story dictate how the animation looks? Can an animator be realistic when a script doesn't call for it? Um, well, the script really doesn't call for the art direction. The art director does that, along with the directors. And it's really, it's the animator is there to follow what the art direction is dictated. So, it really comes down to Um, it does really come down to um, sometimes the story will be a little bit broader. The script will be much broader, in which case, sure, um, you know, maybe the, the designs are pushed. You know, Hotel Transylvania, that's a good example of something a bit broader. And therefore the designs are pushed. But then you have something like Disney's Pocahontas, <coughs> which is a bit more serious, and the designs reflect it. Can you do watercolor painting on Tuesday? That would be so cool. On Tuesday. On Tuesday. I will do that. Your wish is my command. I live only to serve. <laughs> Emma, the one who uh, the Wacom one is set, uh, watch is watching. Oh, so Emma, who won the uh, Wacom one, hmm. she's watching. Yesterday, I drew a bacteria riding a unicycle. <laughs> okay, <laughs> today I need to draw some ammonia. The life of an illustrator. <laughs> Interesting. Yes, I've had that. Hey, I got through my biology class by drawing. Paramecium's for my biology teacher for the overhead projector. Is this Griffin called PETA? PETA. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when you do that. Does your watercolor class cover mostly how to use the media or do you also go over how to draw the item, uh, whatever it may be, to paint? It's basically the medium. It's watercolor. I don't talk about... I mean, you can see how I draw it. Because there, there are different aspects. Like, I, I go over painting watercolor um, over drawings as well. So, um, I cover quite a bit of different... Quite a bit of different? Quite a, quite a few different things. Quite a bit of different stuff. Quite a bit of different. Let me give them Cooper's Hawk eyes. Koopa. Koopa. Oi. 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 Koopa. I'm going to go a little... Wider. So let's do this. Aaron, yeah. did you know that birds are dinosaurs themselves? They're known as avian dinosaurs. Yes. 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 Yes, I did. YouTube question, what's the longest time you have drawn for without stopping? Think about 13 hours. Other than, you know, 
relieving myself. Who is Mr. Lebowski and who is the dude? <laughs> I am the dude. Oh, uh, did you save? Oh, you know what? Yeah, I have not have you. That's a good idea. What do you think so far? You like it? Yeah. I think it's coming out. I'm, I'm digging it. Alright, let's uh, file. Save as. Griffin. Photoshop. Desktop. Save. Okay. Alright. Gabby's asking uh, if you listen to Tom Waits. Yes, I like Tom Waits. I like his acting too. I love Tom Waits. I loved him in the the uh, was it the the Legend of Buster Buster what is it uh, Buster Skaggs on Netflix Buster Scruggs Scruggs that's it thank you where he plays the prospector oh I got you pocket I got you Mr Pocket Mr Pocket Mr Pocket <laughs> I didn't realize that was Tom Waits yeah and he's also I love him in. Mystery Men. He's the weapons guy. Oh, Mystery yeah. Men. <laughs> oh, God, I love that movie. Doctor, you are a genius. That's what the card says. <laughs> Your uncle and I used to watch that movie a lot. Uh, Mystery Men, I used to watch a movie a lot growing up myself. It was kind of our go-to movie. Eddie Izzard. Oh, yeah. Part of the Disco Boys. But it's funny, I didn't even realize who, who he was until I watched the stand-up comedy and then watched the movie again like, Oh, wait, that's... Yeah. Oh! <laughs> and plus it, I never really recognized him at first because he was using it, his American accent yeah well he wasn't in drag either uh, you know, well <laughs> he wasn't entirely in drag but he was no he likes I, mean, I, I think he stuff. likes comfortable shoes oh no when he's on stage I mean yeah he likes to put on a little makeup and wear some comfortable shoes nothing wrong with that not at all. You do you. That's right. You do you, baby. Favorite song and character from Pocahontas? Uh, Colors of the Wind. Colors of the Wind. Yeah. Hello. 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 A career. And you pay with all the colors of the wind. All right. I wanted to ask. Uh, I wanted to ask. What do you feel about the "you need to draw every day to get better" thing? Well, I don't think you need to draw every day. Come on, you don't even need to eat every day, but you do need to draw a lot in order to get better, and you got to do it semi regularly. Does it have to be every day? No. Should it be a lot? Yes. So there you go. That's what I think of that. And Gabby's asking the in, infamous uh, Eddie Ezer question. Cake or death? <laughs> well, obviously I picked death. I mean cake. Cake. I mean cake. <laughs> See animal characters? I saw How do you, uh, Twitch I question, how do you characters. balance learning art with doing your own recreational art? Well, they kind of go hand in hand, don't they? I said, don't they? Your recreational art is going to be influenced by what you learn about art in general. Art, just like music, has rules. You don't have to follow the rules. But your art might not be as, as pleasing. It's like in music, you don't have to make a G chord. You can just drum, strum the strings, but 
it might not sound as well. Well, art's the same way. There's things that you might want to learn that will help you create better art. And as you learn it, you, it will affect your recre recreational art. I don't know what recreational art is compared to art, but I'm just kind of using the same terminology that was in the question. You say. Hey. Is Griffin part of Egyptian mythology? Uh, you're thinking of the Sphinx. And which, if I recall, the Sphinx was... That's from... Uh, the, the Sphinx is, is from... Egyptian. Is from Mystery Men. Well, that's the superhero Sphinx. But, <laughs> but the mythology... That was Pee Wee Herman. The Sphinx. No, no, that's the Spleen. Oh, that's right. I'm just spleen. Spleen. Hey guys, I got superpowers too. No, the Sphinx was the um. Yes, the uh, guy that could American shoot. Guy. Oh, that's right. And you are fools. And there's Blue Raja, Master of Silverware. <laughs> My favorite. Um, then there's Mr. Furious, the shoveler. It is hammered. The shoveler is my favorite. That's actually like my shoveler, Blue Raja, and then the Blue Raja, uh, and then uh, the spleen. That's like my top three. Yeah, but that that line when they all get drunk, the, the shoveler the, is hammered. hammered. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite line in the whole movie. I shovel well. I shovel very well. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's such a but, weird movie. But of course, the Blue Raja is another favorite. God, he that guy well, is so is... cheesed right now. <laughs> Blue Raja, Master Sibue. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, what are you doing? <laughs> no, but is there? Um, can't get any funnier. But the actual Egyptian Sphinx. I think it's the head of a man. No, it's the head of a lion. No, it's head of a no, man. No, body of a head lion. Of a, head of a man, uh, body of a lion, wings of an eagle, and a tail of an ox, I think? Or like the back end of an ox? Oh, that's... No, that's you. No, that no, that's you. I know. I'm working on it. All right. Recreational art equals pictures of lounge chairs, sofas, etc. <laughs> You know, baseballs and baseball bats and grills and hamburgers and whatnot. All right, I'm slowly getting this colored in here. There's our our Gryffindor. There we go. There is a bird, lion, tiger mix. Do we want tiger stripes? Or I kind of like it the way it is. What do you think? I think getting it too many, getting it marked up too much is gonna is gonna be a detriment. Kind of think we can go bigger with it. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Well, oh, so what is, so the Sphinx was uh was in Greek tradition, but it was also in Egyptian. The the Greeks instead of a head of a man it was a head of a woman, but the uh Egyptians changed it into a head of a man. Ooh. Did not know. And it was a head of a um, a head of its time. <laughs> mythical creature with a head of a human, a falcon, a cat, or or a sheep, and the body of a lion with wings of with wings of an eagle. So it was. So it wasn't just a single type of head. It was different heads. You're the wind beneath my wings. Overall, it's 
basically a griffin, but with a different kind of head. All right, let's get some lighting on this sucker. On this sucker. Let's do it. Uh, let's uh, throw a background in there. Here we go. There we go. There we go. Here we go. There we go. Getting some blue sky in here. By the way, the brush you use to color that is that your uh, 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 sea brush? Yes. I'm using a different one now. But yes. As we get closer to the horizon, it's going to warm up. As you get closer to the horizon, there's more particular, particulate in the atmosphere. And so it gets warmer because it's ref that particulate is reflecting back sunlight. The sky gets bluer and darker as you go up from the horizon because you're looking through less atmosphere and more space. Carrie Ann Bullmore says, What more week left in my day job to become a full time artist? Thank you, Aaron, for your courses. Uh, Lies in just being such a great role model. Whoa! Uh, you thank you. You me the courage to take the plunge and make it work. You're right awesome. Dustin's okay too. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, congrats. <laughs> uh, you're okay, I guess. Twitch question. Hey, Aaron, I have a question about lighting. When making traditional art, is natural light like sunlight through a window best, or artificial light like from lamps and such better? Um, I always like painting with natural light, uh, specifically painting by north light, which is light that um, is not direct sunlight. Um, anytime you can get a studio with north light, it's uh, um, I think it's beneficial. Do you find it helpful to do shading on a separate layer? Also, when you color, uh, do you do different colors on a different layer or keep them on the same one? Uh, it depends. It really depends. I don't have a hard, fast rule. Except for on my shading, I try to do my my shading and... Uh, there we go. Um, I try to do all that on a separate layer. Until I, until I get to the, you know, wanting to do opaques, you know, like the final reflected lights and stuff like that, then it, it goes to, um, well, it still goes to a separate layer, actually. Question. Yes. What are the most reliable revenue streams for an independent uh, artist or painter, given that commissions are considered to take too long of a time and are a quote unquote one time sort of revenue. I don't know. You know, it, it's it for me. It's all about that base. All about that base. Um. You know, I I. I haven't really sold much. I, for me, it's about teaching. That's how I, that's how I make my living, and sit here and uh, teach you guys how to how to do art. And um, uh, I spent a long time working for a studio and doing selling originals, and and uh, I still occasionally sell originals. Um, 
and that was a major revenue stream. But to be honest, you know, now it's it's such a uh, different world now that I I don't really know because you know you have Patreon, which I'm, we're part of. We do that as well, and there's um, well, there's just all kinds of different ways of creating revenue for yourself as an artist nowadays. I wanted to put these spots in because I wanted them to help define the shape. I'm not going super heavy on the spots. How long did it take you to understand how light works on objects when illustrating, or are you still learning? I'm still learning. I, you know, I, I was thinking about that the other day. I've, I get a lot of people asking me about lighting and how I do it, and I've done, created a course on lighting. I remember probably 25 years ago really being confused about lighting and how color is affected by lighting and reflected light, the difference between warm and cool, shadows, all of that. And I really remember making it a mission of wanting to find out how all of that worked. And so that's how I set about doing that. And it's, you know, it, that was 25 years ago. Um, here we are in 2000, you know, that was in the, in the early 90s. Well, actually, even earlier than that, I mean, as a, as a high school student, I wanted to know all this stuff. And, um, and it's taken that long to learn it. But it also, um, but I'm still learning. Constantly. Aaron. 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 <laughs> Do you work in color pencils? And if so, would you do a course on them? Uh, I used to work in, you know, I really haven't worked in colored pencil in such a long time. I do. I mean, I've got colored pencils. I did one, actually, I take that back. I did an image, a colored pencil image uh, a few months ago. It's not something I normally work in, but it's something I exclusively worked in when I was in high school. That and watercolor. So, yeah, I could do that. Let's put a little uh, uh, let's do this. We're going to do a clipping mask. Oops. We're going to do a clipping mask. All right. We're going to set that to multiply. All right. We got to figure out our lighting, Dustin. The lighting? Yeah, you got to help me figure it out. Uh, All right. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Yeah, just make it completely black, like pitch black darkness. And once again, I want to remind you guys that my um, my watercolor course. If you guys are interested in learning watercolor, watercolor is the first medium I ever learned growing up as a kid. Started learning watercolor when I was eight years old. Uh, I was lucky enough my stepfather had a degree in interior design and he he was learning watercolor to, to do his renderings for his designs so he started teaching me watercolor at the age of eight and I fell in love with it I just thought it was magic 
and I've done watercolor ever since. I'm 52 years old now and I still do watercolor. I love doing watercolor. And, uh, and so I created this course several months ago and, uh, and it's been doing really well, but because of COVID and, uh, and we've been wanting to give you guys deals on stuff, we decided to drop the cost down to five bucks. Five dollars. Five dollars. So that's what we've done. So you can get my watercolor course now for five dollars. And it's, I think the course is about 12 hours long. I think it's a, it's a big course. I know that. I can't remember how many, how many uh, hours we put into it, Dustin, but. It's a big one. I know we put a lot. So I'm creating shadows right now. So go over to creatureartteacher.com and, uh, and check that out. Check out my watercolor course. For five dollars, somebody's recommending um, putting lighting uh, from the bottom, like from the bottom up. Oh, but he's outdoors. Yeah, but some like vol uh, volcanic lighting. Oh, that's interesting. Well, let me see. Let me finish this first, and then we'll we'll try doing some lighting from underneath. We'll do it as an option. That's one of the oh I've got a I've got a course on lighting too, and um, that there we go. That um, I really enjoyed making because and that I, and in that I go through different uh, different lighting situations, like what we're doing here. Okay, so they're talking about lighting it from underneath. It's we have a dark. Okay, let's do this. Let's try this. I, I'm game. All right. You're what? I am game. So oh. let's do this. Let's make it a darker, like almost nighttime. So we're going to do this now. We're going to lose this shadow. We're going to do a new shadow. That's going to be a clipping mask as well. We're going to set that to multiply. All right. Now, on this layer down here, because we want it to feel like they said a, like a, a volcano underneath. Dustin? Yes? Are you falling asleep? No, I closed my eyes for a second. <laughs> Trying, I'm trying to do something here. Then do something. But they said like a volcano. Yeah. Okay, so we can heat something like that. And then what we'd have to do is we're going to do our lighting. Let's set that to multiply. We'll do our lighting like this. Yeah. So our light is going to come from the bottom now. In which case, so your sister's coming over later on in the family. Are you going to hang out or are you going to go home and go to bed? Probably going to go home and go to bed. <laughs> Dang, man. I went to bed at 9, 9.30 last night and I ended up waking up at 3 in the morning. And you've been awake since? Yep, I laid in bed for an hour and a half wide awake. So I was like, well, I guess I'm not going to bed anytime soon. You know why why it is? Is because you never keep a normal schedule. You stay up on the weekends all night. I try going to bed at a proper hour the past five five days, and still. Well, it takes time. Do you own any James Gurney books? I purchased two of his books on uh, color tourists and light during lockdown. Yeah, I, well, I, I've got Dinotopia. So now with this with the drawing, I gotta change the drawing here. 
because that's all going to be in light now. That part of the wrist. That's all going to be in light. This is going to be in shadow. Do you have any of your stepfather's watercolor pieces? No, I don't. We uh, Our house burnt down when I was in high school, and so everything got burned up. All my art got burned, all of his art got burned. So, we're being lit from underneath, so now it's going to change the way our lighting works on the eye too, which is kind of interesting. Gee, this creature reminds me of the character Mushu from Tarzan. <laughs> Back to that little inside joke again. Yeah. drawing such things like this, do we need to buy a drawing board or can we just draw with the mouse? No, you can't draw with a mouse. Do not no, draw can. with a mouse. You can, but it'll be sloppy. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll be terrible. Do not, you can't draw with a mouse. I don't care what anybody says. I know there's going to be someone out there that says, I do it all the time. No, you don't draw with a mouse. So now you can see that the lighting is a little different. He's being lit from underneath, which is cool. I like it. We're going to stick with it. What do you got over there? Nothing? A uh, few are popping up just reading and making sure they're good. Uh, making sure they're not trolls? Yeah. Are you suggesting a Cintiq one most likely or a tablet? I or Yeah, I mean if you can swing a Cintiq, definitely a Cintiq. Um, uh, but at the very least a tablet, yeah. Listen, isn't it past your bedtime? <laughs> YouTube question. Any idea as to why the art of Princess and the Frog is over $300? <laughs> no. Probably because it's limited print. I have no idea why it's that much. What tool is that they're using for the shading? What tool? Uh, this is uh, this is my pastel C brush, um, and I'm using a clipping mask. And what else? I've got it set to multiply. Is the blend mode so that it darkens? There. So now you can see we're going to start to get some lighting underneath. Are you left-handed or right-handed? I'm left-handed. I am left-handed. You're just weird. Have been my whole life. I am weird. There we go. So there is our cat. Now, I'm going to put another layer on top of that. We're going to set that, whoops, we're going to set that to overlay. We're going to get some warm light. But we're going to set this, we're going to set this guy on fire. Here we go. What do 
What do you do when your Cintiq color is different from your monitor color? You gotta get you gotta get them balanced. Well, the Cintiq is the monitor. Yeah, but you, like a second monitor, like this. Right. In which case, you probably need to adjust your monitor color because the Cintiqs tend to be pretty darn accurate. Or at least I think they are. I'm sure there's people out there that disagree. But I think they're pretty darn accurate. Well, we've really seen the difference between your, your screen and my screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's, that's a different issue altogether. Because this, when I print off of this, it, the print looks just like the monitor. Oh, yeah? Yeah. There we go. No background? It's going to be sky. Yeah. I have a Wacom Cintiq Pro 13 inch HD, but it it lags a lot and we don't know how to fix it. Do you have any tips? The Your lagging so smooth. The lagging is from your computer. Yep. You need a stronger computer. Yep, you need a computer that has a good, a really good CPU and really good RAM. The more RAM, the better. Yeah. And uh, and also a good GPU doesn't doesn't hurt either. But the the main focuses are the CPU and the RAM. CPU. Andrew. <laughs> That's just weird. <laughs> How do you deal with backgrounds? How do I deal with them? <coughs> Compose it. Compose it so that it's a, you, you're thinking about it as part of the composition. Just moved out, and I'm doing jobs that that are art related, with the ultimate goal of becoming an illustrator. What entry level jobs do you think are easy to get? Um, that are more art related than dishwashing. Well, I don't know of anything that's easy. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. Been doing gigs that somebody might hire a beginning illustrator for? Well, to me it's freelance. I mean, otherwise, I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do illustration with. YouTube question. Any idea as to why? Oh, uh, Nick says, oh, it's out of print. Mulan was the way, was that way for a while as well. Yeah, going back to the uh, the book price. It's out of print. That's why it costs that much. Were you ever encouraged as a child to switch to right-handed? A bunch of my teachers tried to force me uh, uh, to be right-handed, but I didn't want to. A bad wrist fracture later forced me to be right-handed. Still lefty for uh, for everything else, but can't for the life of me draw a lefty now. Uh, no, I never had anyone try to force me. I think that's I think that's more uh, of a European. I've noticed in Latin American countries too. They 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 force uh, they tend to push a little bit more right-handedness. Um, I'm not sure why. They don't want them to be creative. <laughs> no, it's not that. <laughs> I just think, I, I do think that there's a heavy belief that, you know, that's just the way it, it is. And, uh, and there's still an element of that here in the States. But my whole family is left-handed. Everybody. My mother's left, my mother was left-handed. My father uh, is left-handed. My brother is left-handed. It's really kind of strange, actually. 
Don't like that. What about like adding that. strong beams of light coming from underneath? We might do that. We might. I want to play some uh, compliments here. Complimentary colors. Hey, Aaron and Dustin. Hey, hey how's Aaron. it going, eh? A uh, question. Do you ever feel like uh, digital art Like a is, nut? Huh? Like a nut? Like a nut? You ever feel like a nut? You're, Sometimes you don't? I don't know. But do you ever <laughs> feel like digital art is less liked than traditional? It feels more real when it's traditional, but I wish it was sought out after as much as physical art. Thanks. Yeah, I th well, I just think there's a, there be, a among people that have never done digital art, or if they're not artists, I think there's a a false sense that the computer does it for you, like it's not real art. I do think there's an element of that out there. Yeah, it feels kind of the same way with when it comes to photography, like there's the film photographers, then there's the the digital photographers, in which all the film guys are not really a big fan of digitals, and and they look down on digital guys like, you don't know the kind of work we had to go through to go through the dark rooms, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, then all, and then the newest uh, thing is about um, photographers using mobile phones, using smartphones. Oh yeah. For their photography instead of instead of a full camera. But that's usually for like landscapes or portraits, but uh, you can't do wildlife with with a with a phone. Especially with the with the type of lens range that you need. So I think I'm I'm safe there. <laughs> but but yeah, there's so always, there's always gonna be the debates between the different styles of certain subjects so <laughs> Nick is always so quick with the little little images well, yeah I'm enjoying the mounds because sometimes you feel like a nut <laughs> sometimes you don't you don't know what that is do you you don't know what I'm referencing I I've heard it before I think I you might be too young I, I didn't even, I've heard I didn't it even before think it. I just don't know sometimes you feel like a nut boom boom sometimes you don't boom 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 oh man George got nuts boom mounds don't Never heard that? No. That was a commercial I think when I, I was a kid. I think you, I've heard you quoting it or heard it quoted in a movie or a show or something. I just can't remember where exactly. <laughs> I think that's that was funny. a commercial. All right, so what I'm doing now is I'm adding some cool colors to play against these warms that I have. Did you mention you printed your own paintings? If so, what uh, printer do you use? Uh, we've got um, I've got a large format printer. Uh, Nick has it at his place. I can't remember what brand it is, so Nick can probably say what we have. What do we got, Nick? Nick, 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 Nick. Oh, <clears throat> Mark says I think the old Romans used the left hand instead. Of uh, except for uh, toilet paper, so the left hand was the dirty hand. Could be. Well, I, no, I, that I did know. Yeah. And there's still places like that that think that way. But come on, you're going to leave poop on your hand? Facebook question, is cross-hatching a good start to learn how to shade or not? Yeah, of course. It's a method. Absolutely. Absolutely. What's the biggest mistake long-time beginners do? And how to fix the problem and deal with it? I think getting caught up in detail is one. Not paying attention to composition. Thinking about composition is another. Um, it's all, you know, there's no, I don't think there's any one thing. There's a lot of different things that people struggle with or make mistakes at in their art. And it's just, you know, it's a good practice just to uh, stay focused, you know, stay focused. Stay focused. Aaron, 
this guy talking in the background. Can he draw two? <laughs> uh, who, who's this guy? Is he talking this, about this guy? This guy. Who is this guy? Excuse me while I kiss this guy. Bam, 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 bam. Hell no. Uh, but uh, I used to draw, but nowadays I'm all into uh, photography. About that beast. About that beast. What is that now? Five times? <laughs> I know. <laughs> man, I'm all, man, I'm all about uh, f uh, wildlife photography now. So, that's my that's my current specialty. Besides being the filmographer and editor. Yeah, film over for a head for uh, editor for the crew. Yeah, yeah for the yeah, crew. Uh, big big uh, deal for the crew. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, any advice for digital art beginners? Uh, make sure you have the right equipment. If you can swing it. Get the right equipment. Get up-to-date software. Unless if you're uh, left-handed, make sure you have left equipment. <laughs> Any idea how long your shirts uh, take to reach the UK? I don't know. Nick might be, I, th I think it's a week or so, maybe two weeks. Oh, uh, the big printer is the Epson 9800. For the one that, for the person that asked about our big printer. And you get myself it's a, a 40. It's a 48 inch printer, I mean it's huge. Huge. It can print 48 inches. Yeah, I need to get myself a, a good printer and start printing out my photos. Base, 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 base. Alright, so we're getting there slowly. I'm digging the lighting. Whoever came up with the, uh, hey, light it from underneath idea. I like it. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. Any tips on colored lighting? Well, funny you might ask that because I do. I do cover. In my lighting course, colored lighting. It's really about use. It's it's simple. I mean, I, I hate to answer the question because it sounds like I'm being a smartass, but it's use the color of the lighting and make sure the value. The key to any lighting is making sure that if you want something to feel like it's lit, you got to make sure that's the brightest value. And so that's what you got to do with colored lighting. You make it that color, but also you make sure that it's brighter value than the surrounding darker areas. And that way it's going to read like light, lightning. Lighting, not lightning. Have you ever used Procreate on the iPad? Yes. Matter fact, of fact, I have, yep. I have an entire course at CreatureArtTeacher.com CreatureArtTeacher.com <laughs> on, on my approach to Procreate. ReacherArtTeacher.com <laughs> How old did you start in digital art? Uh, I started 15 years ago. I'm 52 now. Are your favorite wildlife reserves getting enough donations now? You know what? I don't know. Any of any reserve is a favorite of mine, but I don't know. 
Um, I don't know. I know uh, some of our friends in the Maasai Mara are struggling. And uh, we actually are going to be trying to do a little benefit for them uh, coming up in the next few weeks. Um, probably in about five weeks or so. So we can do a benefit for them. Um, I just said that. And uh, we're going to do like a little pay-per-view type thing. Which tablet you might recommend for a beginner? A, uh, I, uh, uh, the uh, iPad. iPad or... Uh, oh, for, or, or like a pen display? Is that what they mean? Yeah. You know what? If you can swing it, and if, you're, if it's something you're serious about, get a Wacom Cintiq. But if you need something to start off with before you go to the big leagues, I will recommend a uh, Wacom 1. Yeah, which Wacom, is still it's still a Cintiq. It is still a Cintiq. Yeah, but it's but it's, it's four hundred bucks, right? Five hundred. Yeah, bucks? it's four four hundred bucks, um, and so it's a good it's a good gateway into using a Cintiq pen display, and from there you can you can learn how to use the display, and if you want to go bigger, then you can see what you what size you want, how much it costs. And you can and you can plan things out from there. So the Wacom one is a good base. Because it's base all about to, that base. <laughs> yeah. It's kinda like what I did with my uh, photography when I started with the Canon Canon Rebel. Start with the Canon Rebel T six, it was like four hundred four hundred bucks and from there I learned the basics of photography and learned what I wanted to do and needed to get to pursue that and I just kind of work my way from there so was, you start you start with something cheap but but effective of what you want to do you learn from there and you progress to the next level that's right at least that's my my method uh, my method you tell them does that make sense I hope that makes sense yes <laughs> So we're getting some lighting on our eyeball. What do you think of Stan uh, Prokopenko? He is he a cool guy? I can't stand that guy. <laughs> He's all right. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I do not like him. <laughs> I love Stan. I'm always, I'm always asking, like, what, when's the next time we're going to go do a video with him? I know. Aaron, did I ever use the Microsoft Surface or Microsoft Studio? No. You've always been walking. Which question? Hey, Aaron, I got a question. How did you get to working in Disney as an animator? I want to be an animator, but I don't know what the best way is to get to it besides school. I'm kind of self-taught in animation because my school doesn't have any animation classes besides your courses. Wait a minute. My courses at your school? It's not right. That's not right. Um, I got in through an internship. I went to Ringgan College of Art and Design back in the 80s and Disney was looking for artists uh, through an internship program I was the fir very first non-animation school intern program that they did and uh, it worked out pretty good so they decided to keep doing it um, I was hired in 1988 and uh, started at this I went back and finished school I started at the studio in 1989 as a as a an assistant, and then I um, I worked my way up the ladder, 
I became an animator in 1990, late 1989, and uh, and went on from there. Dustin, do you edit your photos? Yes, I do. I I always shoot in raw, uh, in raw format of the photos, and I always edit uh, in uh, Adobe Lightroom. Every once in a while, uh, like three or four times, I've used Photoshop as well to eliminate something out of the background, but mainly Lightroom. some fun with this lighting. Maybe we'll, we'll create some, uh, should we create some volcano explosions? 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 Things go boom. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 including Nick, including Dustin. Yes, we love it there. We even have a favorite restaurant. We're trying to get back to Bozeman, actually. Bozeman, Montana. Yeah, I just really want to travel in general. Montana, Africa, Alaska. I just want to get out there. Warren says, darn it, I can't get all about that bass out of my head. You've infected me, Blaze. <laughs> I know, it's stuck in my head, too. That's why I keep singing it. Hey, Dad, I love you, but can you please stop it with that? <laughs> All about that bass, about that bass. Ah! Whatever happened to Megan Trainer? Is she still around? Oh, she's still around. Is she making music and whatnot? Oh yeah, she's been doing good doing music. You're just so stuck with all about that bass that you don't yeah. really pay attention to anything else. <laughs> just paying, I've just been listening to John Mayer. Oh yeah, and his. I've been on a and listening to that every every twenty four seven. Yeah, I've been playing the heck out of that album. Born and raised. Every time I I come over, the moment I step in step in the backyard. Oh, you gotta hear this album. <laughs> Something about Olivia. Dustin, did you did you hear this album? <laughs> yeah, I I heard it last time I was here. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> hey, at least you got a dad that shares music with you. Oh yeah. Just more than one occasion. <laughs> Well, and when I drink, I tend to repeat myself. Is Wacom Company uh, best for beginners? Yes, I think it is. Absolutely. I say start with the best. If you're serious about 
doing digital art, if it's something that you're going to stick with, then I'm a big advocate about getting the right tools. Learn on the best tools. Learn on the tools that can give you the best results. When I drink, I tend to repeat myself, too. <laughs> when I drink, I tend to repeat myself, too. When I drink, I tend to repeat my... I think Nick's drinking. I, I, I would not be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday. It's Friday. I think he's usually got a vodka going about now. Aaron, have you ever listened to Joe Crookston? Great acoustic folk artist, uh, singer, and multi-instrumentalist. Uh, no, who is it? What's this? Joe Crookstone. No. Crookston. C-R-O-O-K-S. I've been listening to a lot of Tom, uh, other than John Mayer. I've been listening to a lot of Tommy Emanuel lately. I'm a huge fan of Tommy Emanuel. Any more news on the house move? Uh, well, I'm not, I'm not moving. I'm getting a house, trying to get a house for my daughter and my son-in-law and my grandkids. And I'm waiting to hear back from the bank. I love it when kids think remixed old songs are new. Cracks me up. <laughs> <laughs> like why? Like what? Oh, just like oh, that's a good example. I I can't think of one, but like basically any like the old Britney Spears or In Sync or anything like that. Yeah, but that's that's not old. well. That's not well, old to me. To me, it's old. But but even like Aerosmith. Yeah. Question: What was your hardest experience during your work at Disney, and what project was it, and why? I think directing Brother Bear was the hardest. Um, I'd never directed before, and I didn't really know what it took to direct. And um, yeah, I really struggled at that. Question. Aaron, is your friend Brian Johnson the same Brian from ACDC? Yes, that's the same one. <laughs> there we go. There's our lighting. Our lighting from underneath. You know what we can do? Want to give the wings some... Uh, some motion blur? Sure. Let's see here. Watch this. Let's take... Well, I'm, I'm watching the comments, but... Let's take... Uh, let's take all of this. Let's put that into a folder right there. And we're going to repeat that right there. And we'll go... Layer. Large group. And then we're going to copy that right there. And then I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to grab this wing. Like so. And I'm going to come over to my filter. And we're going to go radial blur. And I'm going to put that center right about here. I wish... I wish it would actually show the image where, where you could center the, the actual blur. It's really annoying because you have to just kind of guess. Have you ever been interested in Warhammer 40k stuff? I was uh, way back in the day, back in high school and before, and before that. Uh, there we go. That looks pretty good. I built and collected uh, Space Marines. I was an Ultramarines guy. 
but I unfortunately stopped collecting after uh, after high school. Well, more like halfway through high school after uh, uh, mom passed. Like the like the week of her passing was the last time I ever painted any of the figurines, and I just couldn't get myself to getting back on the horse again. Yeah. Well, it's hard. So it's been been like 11, 12 years since I since I painted a figurine. It's been 13 years since your mother passed away. Yeah. Um, I mean, I bought like one or two new figurines since then, but like I built them, but I never painted them. So. Put a little motion on that tail. Look at that. Yeah. Nice. Aaron, your thoughts on Big Trouble in Little China? I love that movie. <laughs> Some of the reflexes. What the heck? What's going on? There we go. I don't know. Maybe I was just pushing the wrong button. Oh, maybe that's what it was. So we got a little blur, a little blur action. It's a motion blur. Oh, you know what? Dang it, I merged everything. Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't merge anything. Good. So, do you want to try doing some, uh... Shall we try doing some... Volcano stuff? Sure. We got, we got, uh, debris brushes. Debris? I don't have any, uh... Texture. Where's my vermicular brush, hairbrush, foliage brush, water brush, wet media brush, hairbrush, textured brushes? Oh, I guess my debris brushes are down mixed with everything in here. Well, heck. We can just put stars. He's dodging a fireball from the erupting volcano underneath him. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> a wet sponge. Yeah. Well, heck. Well, turd nugget. Turd nuggets. Let's put a... Which question? How do you make your painting work after the outlines are taken away? I feel like I, when I remove the line work, the whole piece falls apart. I never have this trouble in traditional, uh, but in digital it always seems to happen. Thank you. Well, watch. Oh, I can't get rid of mine. Uh, what's happening is you're getting rid of that, that darkness, that thing that defines it. So you have to go back in and define it again. Find those little things that will help define. I'm trying to do something. I want to see what happens. Let's go up to filter, blur, radio blur. I'm going to do it as a zoom. I'm going to put it right down here. Yeah, see? Got stuff blowing out, outward like that. too much. So we're going to go back. Uh, what days do you live stream? Every day. We, uh, Tuesdays and Fridays. Yep, Tuesday mornings and Friday afternoons, Eastern Standard Time. We start our streams on Tuesdays at 9 a.m. And on Fridays, we start our streams at 1 o'clock uh, p.m. 
And both those are Eastern Standard Time, so Florida time, basically. Look at this. Nice. Filter, blur, radio blur. There you go. There's our volcano blowing up. Nice. Now what we got to do is just move it down. So it doesn't feel like it's centered. Move this one down. Down here. There we go. The volcano. It's a volcano. 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 It's a twister. It's a twister. White buffalo. Great white buffalo. Great white buffalo. Great white buffalo. Great white buffalo. Voice recognition technology. In our lift in Scotland, along with the white buffalo. Great white buffalo. <laughs> you probably could have used your debris brushes too. No, I know that, Nick. That's what I was. Come on, man. Don't you listen? I was just looking for them. I couldn't find them. Why did you use your, your debris brushes? <laughs> you have to have known they're right there in front of you. I mean, <laughs> it's obvious, isn't it? There's our smoke. This is actually one of my wet media brushes. Question, what are your opinions on how to improve as an artist? I am a hobby artist and have been for three years, but recently feel like uh, all of my work has gotten stale. Well, it may have. That's a, that's a big part of being an artist. So, um, so what you need to do is, you put this on an overlay. Don't like that, no, don't like that at all. What if I put this on Color Dodge. Ooh, look at that. What do you think of that? Ooh. And what if we put this on Color Dodge? Oh, this kind of looks like a... And what if we put... From a comic book. I know. I kind of dig it. I love happy accidents. <laughs> color Dodge. There look are at that. no accidents. I like it. I like it. Um... Uh... Yeah, I mean, having stale work is all part of being an artist. It just happens, and so you got to fight to get through that and break out of it. And, uh, and the only way you can do that is just to keep pushing, keep pressing. Carry on, my wayward son. There'll be peace when you are done. All right, let's lay me, see. Lay my weary head to rest. There you go. Yeah. Don't you, Don't cry you no dare more. cry no more. <laughs> hey, no. Aaron, da, 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 do you think da, art da, school da, da. like uh, Ringling or SCAD Whoa. is worth it these days for animation? I really want to go, but they're pretty expensive. I uh, honestly no. Until they bring the prices down, I don't. I think it's crazy how much they cost. almost criminal. I do think it's almost criminal. And because of how expensive the yeah, prices are? Yeah. And there's a lot of kids that are going to spend that money. They're going to go into debt and they're never going to use it. I think there's kids out there that need to be told honestly that they probably won't get a job that they don't have. And I, and I sound harsh, but this is my reasoning behind it. You know, there's going to be kids out there, or I say kids, people, that are going to spend, you know, $150,000 going to school, and they won't be able to get placed. And they're going to be in debt for almost the price of a house um, for a long time. And I just don't think it's right. Don't think it's right. That's my opinion. And that's my two cents. It's your two shame. 
What's next? Well, I'm pretty much finishing up. Right. But you're happy about that, huh? Oh yeah, we can get, get back to filming. Oh. <laughs> it's 3.30. Yep. Oh no. an over exaggeration of your exaggeration. <sighs> Here's my zoom and pan. <laughs> Excuse me while I whip this out. Alright, so real quick, I'm going to uh, put all of this in another folder. We're going to merge that. We're going to go to image, adjustments, adjustments, hue saturation. We're going to go saturation. Let's push that a little bit. Yeah, I got some serious banding in here. Serious so banding? Yeah. Bunch of bandits. Bunch of bandits. Nothing but bandits here. All right. So there's that. Now I want to take this and I'm going to go to our nice hot color. I'm going to go to my brush. We're going to go and put it on a color dodge blend mode. We're going to set that sucker to 17. Well, she was just 17. And I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to heat this baby up. So what I'm doing is I'm just drawing along the edge. Heating that, getting it nice and hot in reaction to the the heat that's under. <laughs> Where are the questions being read aloud from? Um, from from his conscience. <laughs> See, he has an implant that is wire wirelessly connected to his speaker. <laughs> Should we put one on the eye? Do you apply filters no. to your drawings? I haven't. I mean, not on this one. I do sometimes. Oh my, I did filters. Of course I did filters. <laughs> Look at the blurs I did and everything. Uh -huh. Radio blur. I think they make like color filters. Yeah. Well, even then, like, um, one of the things that you use again for um, burning in the highlights or darkening the darks or color anything. dodge color dodge is that a filter too or is that a no, uh, well it's a blend mode for brush mode. for the brush gotcha gotcha When you don't put away your shopping cart, this creature will appear and tell you to put it back. <laughs> <laughs> and I yelled at a woman at Walmart the other day to put her mask on. She turned and stared at me. Put your mask on! Don't forget to put your shopping cart away. All right, we're getting some light on the subject. Getting somewhere. I like it. What do you think? You like it? Yeah. It's a Griffin. Okay. Yeah, it's a Griffin. I'm glad we des redesigned it. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I'll tell you that right now. I'll tell you right down there, but I'll tell you that right now. Let's make that normal. All right, there it is. Save. Oh, have I saved it yet? I guess I did. That is a good question. Have you? Yes. Are you sure about that? Yes. Question. Do companies like Disney consider art degrees when looking at applicants, or is it solely talent? It is completely and utterly based on talent. Never have we ever cared about someone having a degree. Never have they ever. 
always, always, always. The degree will be with you, always. <laughs> What's the hardest part of the drawing? Uh, so the hardest the part of waking up. What? What's the What was the hardest part of this of this drawing? Uh, finding the pose, I think. Right. Yeah. Finding that pose, making sure it was. Because I think it redrew it good. twice. Yeah. To this point. Have you tried gradient maps? Uh, you apply it, then lower the opacity. Yeah. Yeah, I I put a gradient map on this. I use gradient maps all the time, man. <laughs> oh, the accent is amazing. Ah, oh, thanks. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. You, do you think it's almost time to go? Yeah. So there it is. Here's. Let me get rid of this. There's our griffin. What animals uh, did you pick for this griffin? Uh, just a cat. I made up a general cat. I guess it's lion-like. Yeah, lion very lioness. Like. Yeah, uh, and it, the hawk or the falcon, the bird, the bird of prey. No, I can't bird. Talk. <laughs> bird <laughs> is yeah, um so. is more of a uh, kind of yeah, a Harris hairy. hawk falcon mix. I'm getting some cool colors in here. See what I'm doing here. Yeah. Adding cool colors. If you because I'm a cool kid. If you had to do it over again, how would you approach becoming an animator? Um, state uh, to teach yourself, like how, like to become an animator. How would you teach yourself if you were able to? There's so it? much information online. There is a ton of information online. But, you know, it, it really, I do recommend if you can get mentored by an established animator, a good animator, I recommend that because there are things that I just, I don't know that I could have ever taught myself regarding the spirit of animation and what it takes. You know, so many, even now when I see people teaching animation, so many of them are so focused on the mechanics rather than the spirit, the acting, you know, that you're trying to get across. And that, to me... Especially with character animation, which is mostly what people want to do, that to me is the most important part. It's getting the spirit, it's getting the soul, the personality. And that's not about mechanics, although mechanics have a big part of it. It's really about putting your soul, your, your body, your mind into the piece that you're animating. That's what's most important. And I only learned that because of the mentor that I had, Glenn Keen. There we go. There's our nice, cool colors right there. The Griffin. Gryffindor. Oh, Griffin. There it is, folks. There it is. You and asked for a Griffin, bird. I gave you a Griffin. All right. So once again, I want to remind you guys that go to my website. If you want to learn watercolor, if you've always been wanting to learn that uh, nice traditional medium, uh, it's available. I've got an entire course on my website uh, right now, and it is five dollars. It's only five bucks for that, and uh, um, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, I enjoyed making it. Dustin and I took several. We took several weeks to make that, didn't we? At least. Yeah, and, and that's uh, we got a lot of content in there, and. Um, so go on over to Creature Art Teacher, and you can get my watercolor course for five bucks. I'm just adding a few more things in there. And um, uh, also Tim Hodge's new course on drawing imaginary or drawing mythical creatures is out, and uh, it's awesome. So go check that out as well. Uh, I had a great time today. I loved creating this griffin. I've never drawn a griffin before. No? No. I thought so, you did. No, I've never drawn a griffin. No, not like this. That's new then. So that was kind of fun. It was fun coming up with the pose. And, uh, and remember, you know, when you're doing something like this, explore the different poses. Uh, you know, try to find that gestural curve, the, the line of action. You know, those are some of the things that I always try to find as I'm 
sitting down and posing out a new image. Uh, that's what I did here. And, uh, and then it helps to know your anatomy. If you don't know the anatomy, brush up on it because that's a big struggle if you don't know it. And uh, you don't want to have to be figuring it out as you go when you're trying to create that image. Get that, get that anatomy in your head first. So there you go. I hope you guys have a great, great weekend. Be careful. Uh, put your masks on. Put your grocery cart away. Be nice to somebody. Take what you've learned here today and go make something beautiful. Be, be artistic. And uh, go to Creature Art Teacher and look for some great deals, too. <laughs> Creature Art Teacher. Yes. Tell me. But anyway, I hope you guys have a great weekend. And we will see you again on Tuesday at 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern Central Eastern Central Time Eastern Standard Time Eastern Extra Standard Yes And until then I'll talk to you later Thanks Dustin take it away Hey thank you guys so much for watching And for all you guys that were wondering Who was that guy talking in the background it, it was me I'm Dustin Hi And I want to thank you guys so much for watching Glad you guys enjoyed watching this stream And uh, if, you, if any guys that are new here Are interested in any wildlife photography You can check out my Instagram At Dustin underscore Blaze And I post uh, new wildlife photos over there quite uh, quite often and also over at creatureartteacher.com I have wildlife reference packs you can buy and use for your own wildlife stuff so I got gators, otters, sandhill cranes among other birds and so you can go over there check those out hope you guys like those and I'll see you guys next week stay safe out there this weekend keep your masks on we want to get out of this as soon as we can but not too soon hopefully but until then Cowboy Bebop see ya